Let's hear it for Dave Hughes. Come on. Go nuts. Enmore Theatre, the best venue in Australia. No doubt about it. I am pumped up. We've got 12 of the best comedians in the world are going to be on this stage tonight for your entertainment. Are you pumped up? So you should be. And you look at us, we're out and we're about and we're bloody living our lives. Yeah. Most of us haven't got masks on. <laughs> Oh my God, that was tough work. since what, mate? Since you can't see your mask. All right, that's weirding me out. <laughs> Guy in the front's got an invisible mask and he's possibly on LSD. <laughs> no, it's great to be here. I am pumped up. And I, I, you wear a mask when you... It's your decision you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. Fair enough. But be consistent. I saw a guy the other day in Bondi on a bloody... On a, on a bloody... bloody it was on, what was he on? He's on a skateboard going down a hill, I reckon doing 70, looking at his phone, had a mask on. When you hit that truck, you won't get COVID, will you, mate? Honestly, the mask was confronting for me. I had no idea I had bad breath until the pandemic started. Well, the coronavirus isn't going to kill me, it's my me me own stink. And, and what about when you have to wear them outside? It was full on. I got papped without a mask on in a park. My management rang me into the Daily Mail. I've got a photo of you apparently not wearing a mask in a park. I'm like, oh no, am I going to get cancelled? <laughs> I said, they said, what do you got to say? I said, I, like, I run in that park. Tell them I was running. And so they did. And then the headline, Dave Hughes claims he was running. I was wearing, basically dressed like this. So <laughs> why not run in jeans? Great to be here though, and you're, you're relaxed, aren't you, mate? Yep, good on you, yep. Have you checked how many cases we got today? No, you didn't, did you? Don't give a shit, do you? No, we had almost 14,000. Yep, you don't give a shit. Remember when there was one case? Oh my God, there's one case. Everyone stop breathing. Locked everyone down, remember that? It was full on. And then we'd have the, the press conference, and there was two deaths today. Both people in their hundreds. No, not two people in their hundreds. They're dead. COVID's taken hours from their life. <laughs> and no one can go to their funeral. Oh no. Luckily all their friends died 30 years ago. <laughs> Even their children have died of old age. I can make that joke, because who's, who's had COVID in the room? Yes. Well, you know, when the queen survived it. She's 96. It didn't even touch the sides. The queen. Good on the queen. And who gave it to her? I reckon it was her son, Charles. What do you reckon? Charles has wanted to be king for about 40 years now. He keeps looking at mummy, and mummy's looking at him. I'm never going to die. He's had COVID 15 times. Every time he brings it straight home to mummy. Come on, mummy, give son a hug. Let's kiss on the lips, get the tongues involved. All right, I feel like I've crossed a line. Uh... <laughs> it's great to be here though. I know you're pumped up, well, I'm pumped up. I've never been more pumped up. It's a night of our lives. We've got to live before inflation takes everything from us. You see the story today that a lettuce is more expensive than 12 chicken nuggets. That's going to devastate my children. Dad, we can't buy a lettuce. We're going to have chicken nuggets. We're going to have to. We're going to always go to Woolies, though. The kids can go to Woolies. You've seen that sign? Free fruit for kids at Woolies. Oh, good on you, Woolies. That's going to get my three in there every day. Guess what, Woolies? I've been having free fruit at Woolies for 45 years. <laughs> That's our right as Australians. <laughs> to this day, the first thing I do when I turn up to Woolies is go to fruit and veg, grab a bag, fill it full of their finest quality grapes, <laughs> and walk around enjoying my complimentary fruit as I decide what to purchase for the afternoon. <laughs> Often I don't buy anything. 
bucket so full of grapes, I'm happy. <laughs> Give the empty bag back to the security guard at the exit. Just, just looking today, mate. <laughs> you can have that bag back. I'm not paying 15 cents for it. <laughs> You're the best crowd I've ever had. I've never been more pumped up. It's the night of my life. And good on you. I've had a long time with no crowds at all. <laughs> Trying to do gigs at home in front of my children. <laughs> Once my daughter turned 10, he had three of her friends over doing a few jokes until her bloody brother piped up. My 12-year-old son, he goes, Dad, this is sad. You're so desperate for an audience, aren't you? Yeah, I am, mate. I am. Support me. I support all the bullshit you do. Friday, yeah, Friday night, I've got to drive him an hour to play basketball under 14s. He'll be on his TikTok the whole way. We get to some godforsaken joint and he goes, yeah, just, just pull up out the front and let me out. You go find a park. But one night he said, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. I think you would, mate. I've got the fucking car, okay? So. <laughs> anyway, I go in, watch him score two points. On the drive home, I carry on like he's LeBron James. <laughs> anyway, no, it's great to be here. You're a great crowd. <laughs> I've never been more pumped up. No, I am. I'm super pumped up. I'm super happy. I'm in a super happy relationship. <laughs> I, I, no, I am. No, I am. <laughs> I'm in a happy relationship. Tell you what, though. I, I, I look. I, I'm from Melbourne. Come to Sydney, and uh, you know, it's a beautiful place when it's not raining, isn't it? It's a beautiful place. You never had a curfew. Melbourne had a curfew for a year. You couldn't leave the house after 9 p.m. It was weird. Not even to put the bins out. I can't put the bins out. I'm sorry. They'll pepper spray me. Just throw it over the fence. And the kids say, Dad, we need some sandwiches. I can't go to the 7-Eleven. But the 7-Eleven's open. It's a trap. <laughs> I've got one. I've got, I've got to talk about Bondi Beach for a second. What is going on at that beach? Honestly, people are too fit. No one's eaten a slice of bread on that beach since 1977. It's bullshit. I took some chips down there and the seagulls were looking at me going, what are they, man? Where's your quinoa? I gave a seagull a chip and look, he said, fuck, this is the good shit. This is like crack. Anyway, but don't take your family down there, though, honestly. Not if you... My wife is beautiful, there's no doubt about that. But we sat on the beach, me and my wife, and there are three kids next to us, and then two really, really attractive women put their towels down right beside me, like right there, way too close. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is your life, that is not your life. Look straight ahead, look straight ahead, look straight ahead. Then my wife freaked me out. We've been together 20 years, she'd never done it before. She said, check out those girls beside us. I'm like, what? Could have we been perving together for the last 20 years? But then I had to act, I had to pretend I hadn't seen them. I said, what girls? <laughs> she said, the girls right beside you. I said, what side? <laughs> she said, well, we're on this side, so the other side. I said, oh, I hadn't seen them. All I ever see is my happy family. <laughs> she said, check out what they're wearing. I said, if you insist. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna think I'm gonna need my reading glasses. I can't see much. She said they're called Brazilian cup bikinis. I want a pair. Will you remember? I said, I think I will. I can't remember where our car is parked, but because I love you, this I will commit to memory.